Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I'm here to teach you all about how I overcame my bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. This is our first official episode. I'm so excited. And because it's our first episode, I want to go in and talk about who this podcast is for. Because if you're listening, I know the drill. You first find a podcast and you think, is this going to be worth my time? Is this what I want to learn? What is this? So if you are someone who struggles with overeating, someone that struggles with binge eating, binging and purging and restrictive dieting, this podcast is for you. And I'm going to lay out how to clean up your relationship with yourself so that you can clean up all the emotional stuff that goes along with binge eating and overeating and bulimia. And then I'm going to go over how to break your habit and what is actually going on when you're binging and purging or when those things are happening. I'm going to go over those things. And then I'm going to go over how to lose weight in a non-restrictive, non-calorie counting you know, crash course diet. It's going to be how to intuitively eat in a way that helps you lose weight and then you eventually maintain your healthy goal weight. So if you're seeking help, this podcast is for you. And something I really want you to know is that I'm making this podcast because I have been in your shoes. I struggled with bulimia for years. It was awful. And I understand that you may feel like you're alone and you can't talk to anyone. And I just want to say I'm here for you and I'm making this podcast so that you don't feel so alone and that I wish I had these things when I was trying to get through my eating disorder. And so if I can just help one person overcome those things, then this podcast has served its purpose. I'm going to talk today since it's the first episode. I'm going to go over my story of disordered eating and kind of how I overcame it. And within that, I'm going to talk about the three key steps I took to overcome bulimia. And when I say bulimia, you may not be bulimic, but when I say bulimia, I mean restrictive dieting, binge eating, and then purging through the form of throwing up. So that's the specific type of bulimia that I suffered from, or I was dealing with. So, you know, this, these rules still apply for someone who is binge eating for someone that falls back into restrictive dieting habits. All these things can really help you. So just keep that in mind as I'm telling this story. So I was never super overweight, but there came a point in time where I wasn't satisfied with my body. I had gone through puberty and everything like that, right? And I was 18 and I just felt like I had a little bit of extra fat on my body that I did not want. I started the cycle of dieting and then working out and dieting and working out. And it was a constant battle like this throughout college. I remember my whole college experience being tainted with the fact that I was always trying to lose weight. Eventually, I left to go abroad and study abroad in England, which is the time of my life. But I was gaining weight and I really didn't realize it or it just kind of stuck up on me. I was at my heaviest 170 pounds. I'm not 5'9", so this is just overweight for me. Anyway, so I came back from England and I realized I had gained a bunch of weight. I jumped on the scale and that's when the harsher thoughts came into play and I thought it was because it was my senior year at this point in college and I was stressed out about a lot of things, trying to find a job. I wasn't sure if I was going to be moving to Colorado to be with my partner um, because he went to school out there and it was just a lot of life decisions. On top of that, I was overweight and I really didn't like how my body looked and um, for me, it just wasn't good and it really, I really started to talk quite mainly to myself and I started to be um, having unhealthy thoughts of like, you're disgusting. How could you get to this weight? How do you, what, you look like this? How can anyone take you seriously when you look like this? As if, you know, people that are overweight, you treat them badly because they're overweight. Like it, all the things I was saying to myself was not true, but I was very harsh on myself and very mean to myself because of the way I looked or the way I perceived myself to look. And so when my senior year started, I very quickly set out a weight goal in the fall, the late fall of losing 25 pounds. I was going to get down to 145 and I was very determined to do so. It started out as a normal weight loss and I was counting calories and I would eat 1400 calories a day. And 
quickly it was not happening fast enough or as fast as I'd like. So I started obsessively working out. And then I also dropped my calories to 800 calories a day um, in order to lose an aggressive amount of weight in a small amount of time, just because I was so sick of being overweight. And I thought that that would make me happy. Being thin would make me happy and would magically make all my problems go away. But of course, it did not. It was in January and I was almost done losing all my weight. I had restrictively dieted and I'd gotten there and I was between 150 and 145. And there was one day where I ate more than I had expected to. And I, I, it was probably on something. I didn't keep junk food in the house at that point. I really didn't go out and buy foods that I knew that I felt like I couldn't control myself around. But I did, I think, have some Miss Finster's cookies for whatever reason. And then I also had probably some Arctic Zero ice cream. I don't even know if they still make that anymore. I haven't seen it in the freezer section in a while. But for those of you that don't know, Arctic Zero is a very horrible tasting low-cal ice cream. Like I think the entire cup was like, it's like 120 calories. So super low-cal, but it tastes horrible. But I think I had binged, I binged on the whole carton and then the whole bag of Miss Thinster's cookies. So it was maybe like a 560 calorie binge not going to break your calorie bank, but I freaked out. And I had been dieting for a while and I just, something flipped a switch and I panicked. And I remember thinking, I cannot go back to weighing 170. I just will not do it. I have to fix this. I have to fix this immediately. And I remembered that I could throw up my food. And I was never, I had never been that successful at it in high school. And that very quickly vanished from me in high school. But I tried it again in my senior year at this point in time because I was just so desperate not to deal with the repercussions of overeating. And so I very quickly went to the bathroom. I threw up my food. It happened very quickly and easily. And then I just remember sitting there in the bathroom afterward and thinking, what have I done? Like, why did I do this? And I was really shocked with myself and a little bit scared. And I just told myself, that could never happen again. You can never overeat like that again. And you could never do this again. Both of these things are bad. You're, you're too old to be doing this. That's the thought I told myself. I was like, this is crazy. This is unhealthy. I was just so harsh with myself. And so I cleaned up the toilet. I made sure there was no evidence because I, my roommate, who's still my best friend, uh, one of my best friends, she, I knew she couldn't find out because she would, probably call my parents or try to get me help somehow. Um, And I didn't want to burden her and I didn't want anyone to find out. And I just wanted to deal with it. I've always been very independent and I've always been someone who doesn't want to ask for help. And so um, I just cleaned it up and I moved on. And I thought this won't ever happen again. But of course, um, many of us that struggle with eating disorders, you think that and then it seems like you start to lose control. And very quickly, I found myself overeating again. Within a few weeks later, I broke again. And at this point, I had lost my weight. So there was no real motivation for me to continue losing weight. There was no number to achieve, no goal. So it was just maintenance. And I didn't really understand how to eat and deal with food. I was scared of food, quite honestly. I was tortured by the idea of being around decadent food or high calorie food or anything that, you know, I just didn't want to leave my apartment because I knew that I could control the food that was in my apartment and I couldn't control myself around certain foods. That's what I thought. And so at that point I had lost all my weight, but then of course I overrate, overate. I remember specifically on a bag of, they were still in their shell pistachios. I don't know what the term is, but I binged ate on that and my roommate was was home, so I couldn't purge. And I remember freaking out and then very quickly, the next time I overate, I it was almost planned. I went to the grocery store, I got a lot of food, and then I binged and I threw it up. And then the cycle started to quickly escalate as I would take breaks from class and I'd go and binge and purge while my roommate wasn't home. And obviously, you know how binging and purging feels. Not only does the binge make you feel pretty guilty and it makes your stomach feel pretty bad, but then when you purge, there's the relief of not dealing with the consequences and the feeling of stuffed, full, and uncomfortability gone. But then you, you know, usually I would have a headache. Sometimes my eyes would be bloodshot. Sometimes my throat would be pretty raw and I would be drained of energy. 
and I would feel pretty just just horrible in general because I had just thrown up. And all the while when I was doing this, I kept thinking to myself, you're disgusting. Why can you not control yourself around food? And then on top of that, you are wasting food. People are starving and you're here binging and then throwing it up. The most gluttonous thing you could do. And I was just so harsh with myself. I was so judgmental. And despite the binging and purging, I was slowly but surely gaining weight again. Um, just because not every time I binge could I purge because people are around. And sometimes it was just too hard to control myself around the food that people had offered. And so I was gaining probably like a pound that I didn't want every two to three weeks. And it was just slowly creeping up. Eventually... I had moved out to Colorado with my partner. I was living with him and we still are together now. And he's just, he's gone through so much with me, but that's a story for another day. I eventually told him what was going on because I couldn't take it anymore. I thought I was crazy. I told myself I was crazy and I was out of control all the time. And I really did think that I was going to end up dead or he was going to find me dead one day because of what I was doing to myself. And so I eventually told him because I was planning on seeking help from someone somewhere. And that really is one of the first steps. It's not the three tips I'm going to give you today, but that is a first step in seeking help when you have an eating disorder from someone that you trust. If you have anyone in your life to do that, please do so. Tell them in confidence. Tell them, you know, I just need someone to talk to. It takes the drama out of it a lot. And for me, it was a huge relief to have someone supporting me and to know that I wasn't crazy. The bulimia did last. I kept it going for a few years. And then um, and I would have bits where I'd go off of it and then I would go back on it. And at one point, I lasted a whole six months without doing it. And then I fell back into it very heavily. But then finally, I started looking into the life coaching industry, I was always, always, always trying to read different books and listen to podcasts about weight loss, any sort of dieting tips I could get, any sort of um, habit tips I could get. But I stumbled across some information. I got this from Corinne Crabtree, which I'm forever grateful for. She had a podcast about losing 100 pounds. And even though I had never been 100 pounds overweight, I'd really only been a few pounds overweight, I listened to it. And the first thing she said wasn't really about any dieting tips. It was about mind management and to stop treating yourself like shit, basically. And so that is how I first started to recover. The first thing that I did was I stopped treating myself like trash. And those of us that suffer from bulimia and from eating disorders usually have an abnormally high negative self-perception of ourselves. People obviously have ups and downs on how they view themselves, but for people that are struggling with eating disorders, they usually have a very negatively focused self-perception of themselves and are usually very harsh on themselves for no good reason. And so for me, like I was saying before, I was constantly in my head, I was very scared to be alone with myself because I was constantly telling myself, you're fat. That makes you a bad person. You're lazy. You're disgusting. You have no control, no willpower. You amount to nothing. Um, all these things was constantly on repeat in my mind. And I really thought of myself as worthless, which is a horrible thing to think about some, someone. And there was a point in my eating disorder where I really did not want to live anymore because I just felt as though, what is the point? And I'm so grateful that I have people in my life at that time, um, because if it weren't for them and the pain that I knew that they would feel if I left this world, then I would have gone through with it. And I'm so grateful that they were there. But it also showed me, now looking back reflectively at it, of how little I thought about myself and how poorly I was treating myself. People with eating disorders usually have quite an abusive relationship with themselves. From that point, I started making efforts towards trying to feel better about myself and trying to be happy where I was and drop the self-judgment and drop the self-sabotage. So the first thing I did was I started journaling every day and I started writing out what, what was in my head and all the thoughts I thought about myself. And I finally made it a list of all the things I thought about myself and all the bad things I told myself. 
And then I made a list of all the things that I wanted to think about myself or that I should be thinking about myself instead. And I put a bunch of sticky notes up on my mirror and they're still there now of all of the things that I chose to believe about myself instead. And instead of thinking you're worthless, my number one belief is I love and respect myself. This changed the world for me. And another one was I always have my own back. Those two things really stuck with me. I was not willing to go back to treating myself horribly ever again. I just couldn't. I knew I couldn't take it. And it was only leading myself into a road of despair. And a lot of you guys might think, well, I have evidence to support that I'm not a good person, that I'm horrible. What you need to know is that positivity breeds positivity and negativity breeds negativity. When you're constantly telling yourself you are worthless, you will act as though you are worthless. If you tell yourself you're disgusting and you have no control, then you will act disgusting and you will act as if you have no control. I was feeding myself lies that I wanted to believe about myself when really I'm not worthless. I can provide the world with tons of value and you are not worthless. You have a lot of talents that you just choose not to see. And even if you don't, let's say, even though I'm sure that you do, you have a human brain. You're an incredibly smart creature. You have the capabilities to do way more than you are letting yourself do right now. And you have the ability to be happy right now. And the more and more you think things like, I love and respect myself, the more you will treat yourself with love and respect. And that doesn't just go for eating disorders. It goes for whatever choices you make that day. You'll do it out of love and respect for yourself, not out of restriction and punishment, which are two completely different things and lead you down two very different paths in your lives. The big number one step is to stop self-judgment, stop treating yourself horribly, And when you do want to improve, go at it with a constructive point of view, not a, well, you're just a failure. Of course, that's what you did. If you fail at something, you need to think, what can I learn from this? That's very important. And we can have a whole podcast on that, but you need to stop treating yourself like shit and stop the negative thoughts because they are not helpful and they may have even become an addictive way of thinking for you. It's just your automation. You can redirect your brain to think what you want to think about yourself. You can choose to believe right now that you are worthy despite any evidence of the contrary. When you start to think that you're worthy, you will start to look for evidence that you are worthy. The second thing I did, once I started to drop the self-judgment, I was still binging and purging. Although I will say my frequency of binging and purging did go down just because I wasn't constantly trying to avoid negative emotions. But once I finally dropped the judgment of myself, I dropped the judgment that came with my bulimic habits. And so every time I binge and purge, I didn't treat it as if I was doing something awful, I kind of treated it as if a way to look and be like, huh, what happened? That's weird. And I almost treated it like a dirty habit or not a dirty habit. I just looked at it as neutrally as possible. I looked at it as if this is a habit that I no longer want. Little did I know that once I dropped the self-judgment, I started looking into habits and it turns out uh, bulimia is just a habit. Binge eating is just a habit. And so The second step is that you need to understand your habits. Habits are literally just neural pathways in our brain that are made to automate what you do. Habits are very good in one sense because this is the reason that you can drive to work every day and sometimes forget the drive there because you weren't really paying attention But your brain is on autopilot. It knows the turns to take. It knows when to generally do the things it's supposed to do. You can do a lot of things on autopilot. And if you didn't have habits and autopilot going on, then doing things like breathing and normal bodily functions would be very difficult, let alone normal things like taking a shower, washing the dishes. Those don't take up much mental capacity because your brain is on autopilot. And really, habits are just a series of cues, cravings, responses, and rewards. And if you guys really want to find out more about habits, I can do a whole episode on this, and I will. But um, James Clear, Atomic Habits, is where I did learn a lot of this from. It's an excellent book. I highly recommend you go check it out. Binging and purging has become a habit for you. Or just binging. Let's take the purging out of it. Whatever. And binging and purging have become a habit for me. It starts with restrictive dieting. This binge purge spiral is what I teach my clients. And 
first we have the negative self-image. And this is where you start treating yourself very poorly. You think if you're thinner, then you'll be happy and you treat yourself meanly until you get to that spot. So that's your cue. And then your reward is your response to that is I'm going to restrictively diet and punish myself until I get to the body I want. Well, then that leads to binging because if you're restrictively dieting and then you're constantly harassing your brain with negative emotions, you're going to be wanting to look for an escape and your escape and relief is binging food. So a lot of times it's smoking for smokers or it's alcohol for alcoholics. It's the same thing. So finally you will binge and then you'll be left with feelings of guilt, panic, self, um, self-hatred, because of that, because it's something that you didn't want to do. And then um, you will purge because you're trying to escape the consequences of what just happened. And you're trying to find relief from the binging. So then you purge and then you're left with feelings of even heightened disgust and self-hatred. And then the whole cycle repeats itself over and over again. And you just keep going further into the spiral and habit. The reason that bulimia or binging and purging becomes such toxic habits and such potent addictive habits is because food that we, the food that we binge on is generally quite high in calorie. I would as I would always binge on ice cream and cookies and baked goods and pizza, like very high fat, very high um high digest fast digesting carbohydrates, all those sort of stuff and they're just foods that are made to spike your dopamine. For those of you that don't know, loosely dopamine is what drives desire. There are other things that drive desire, but dopamine is what drives your desire and will to live quite often. It's what drives you to do actions. So when you have broccoli, your dopamine spike is going to be there, but it's not going to be as high as if you were to have ice cream. The dopamine spike is way, way higher. And so when you're constantly feeding yourself negative emotions, negative things, and then you're starving yourself on top of that, when you have that ice cream, your dopamine is already very low. And so you have a major binge, your dopamine is going to go through the roof. And your brain is very quickly going to put that habit on autopilot. And your brain is going to want you to binge because it knows that it'll access those nutrients and the dopamine spike that it craves. And that's why binging and purging becomes so, so addictive. And then the other thing is that it becomes an autopilot. So that's why people will all of a sudden say, you know, all of a sudden all the ice cream and the Oreos was gone and then I was throwing up because I didn't want to deal with it. It's because they don't even really remember it. They was just, they were going numb. And that's what I remember when I was binging and purging. I would go numb because I didn't want to deal with the world anymore. And I didn't want to deal with the consequences of what I was doing. Now that you understand your habit, the third final step is that you have to interrupt your habit loop to be able to break it. And so you have to reawaken to your autopilot and you have to pause and understand before you're going down that road of binging and purging and make the decision to stop. And there are a lot of different intricacies to how I stopped bulimia, but first I started to become aware of my autopilot. I started to reawaken my brain. Instead of just going down the binging and purging loop, I would start to be like, oh, well, I start to feel a little anxious and then I start to think about food and then I start to head towards the kitchen and then I start to pull things out of the fridge and then once the food is in my mouth, then I go numb and then I want to eat and then it's too hard to go back. And I call this the binge purge roller coaster and we can talk about this in another episode too, but because there's so much here and it's already, (laughs) my reporting's already quite long, I can see. But you need to start interrupting things and start pausing before you go down that road. It doesn't mean that you're not going to binge and purge, but the more and more you can pause before you start going down the path of binging and purging, the more you can practice the ability of delaying gratification and taking back control of your autopilot. You need to start interrupting your habit loop, pausing, and then once you've understood and you've gotten good at, these are my cues, These are the things that set me off. This is the time of day where I'm more likely to binge and purge. You can start to be onto your brain. You can say, these are the things that I'm going to think. I'm prepared for this. I'm going to want to do this, but I'm not going to act on it. And that's a whole other art of you need to sit with the urge to binge and purge and not act on it. 
And that doesn't mean resisting it. That doesn't mean saying, no, 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 I don't want to do it. I don't want that. The ice cream sounds horrible. I don't even like ice cream. That feels horrible. That takes up a lot of energy. That's using willpower. And then you'll eventually break. What you need to do instead is say to your brain, yeah, it would be so nice to have that ice cream. I would really enjoy the ice cream. I love ice cream. It would be great. But instead, brain, we're going to choose to sit here it's going to be hard, but we're going to do that today instead. Even if it's just for 10 minutes and you then eventually give up and binge and purge. The more and more you practice a new neural pathway neural pathway of this habit versus the other habit, whenever you have the urge to eat, instead of giving in and rewarding that habit loop and making it stronger, you need to pause and reinforce the other habit loop of, you know, no, when we feel stressed... We sit down and we take a breather. Or when we feel bored, we sit with that boredom and we choose what we're going to do next. Those are the things that will help you start to build a new habit and a weekend that old neural pathway of binging and purging. So this is a lot. I knew this episode was going to be long because it is the first episode of the series and I'm covering all three steps and my whole story. But just re- reiterate, the three steps I took to overcome bulimia for good and lose my weight was stop self-judgment, understand your habits, and then start interrupting your habit loop and become aware of autopilot. Those three things, I guarantee you, are a recipe for success when it comes to breaking habits and Also, stopping the self-judgment will help you with so much more in your life than just food and your weight. And it becomes so much more than that very quickly once you start treating yourself with respect. So that is all I have for you guys today. I really, really appreciate you listening. This is, again, the first episode ever. You can go to my website. I have a full free download that's on how to stop self-judgment 101 and that is a free worksheet for you guys you can download from my website and it'll really help you take the first steps to repairing your relationship with yourself and it will really help you stop seeing your eating disorders as such hindrances and help you understand why you're doing it so if you want to repair your relationship with yourself i highly highly recommend that you go take that worksheet for those first steps to do so so important to recover from any eating disorder or any problem in your life is that you need to fix your relationship with yourself first so the stop the self judgment worksheet is on my website at www bingebreakers.com. If you want to take these steps further, I coach people on eating disorders and how to break through them and how to lose their mental weight and their physical weight. So if you want to work with me, you can apply on my website at www.bingebreakers.com. So I hope you guys have a lovely day. It's a Sunday while I'm recording this and it's pretty beautiful outside. I know we're in the midst of this COVID-19, which is pretty crazy, but I really, really wanted to create this podcast for you guys. I just think now is the time and it's so important. And I know during quarantine, a lot of our issues are becoming much more heightened and real, it feels like, um, because we're just stuck inside all day. So, but I really encourage you to to, if you can, go out for a walk. I'm going to go out and take my little doggo for a walk after this recording and enjoy the sun and then work out at home for a little bit and then edit this podcast. So um, thank you so much for listening. I hope that this helps you. Please submit a review if you liked it. And if you want to hear any specific things, I'll be going over many more specific ways um, in the form of eating disorders as this podcast continues. There's a lot of good things that we can get into and a lot of things that I can offer to help you guys. So stay tuned, subscribe, give us a rating. um, And I hope you guys have a good day. Take care of yourselves. And remember, you are worthy of love and respect. Bye.